Hey guys, you know, we don't talk about biblical archaeology enough. And this is important because atheists keep on thinking that archaeology will disprove the Bible. And then it is the opposite. Biblical archaeology proved that the Bible is true. Over these last few years, they found amazing discoveries and no one is really talking about this. Ask yourself, do you even know about one discovery in his last few years? Probably not, right? So let me show you the top 10 discoveries in just this last 10 years. Let's start with number one. The burned scroll of Leviticus. You know, the day and age that we live in now is amazing when it comes to technology. Because now we have the technology where we can actually go and, you know, when a lot of scrolls have been burned in the past, well, we can now go and read those ancient scrolls. Yeah, we can digitally kind of open it up, even though it's burnt, charred, and read those ancient scrolls. Bible archaeology report.com says the badly damaged scroll was discovered in the burned out remains of a synagogue at En Gedi. Because the scroll was burned so badly, essentially only a charred lump remained. Researchers had conserved the scroll until technology had advanced to the point where it might be readable. Well, the day is here and they read the scroll. The scroll revealed the first two chapters from the book of Leviticus. Carbon-14 tests had dated the scroll to approximately 300 years after Christ. Paleographic analysis of the style of writing used suggests a first century date between 50 to 100 after Christ. The translated text of Leviticus is identical to that in the Mozaretic text of the Old Testament. This makes the En Gedi scroll the earliest copy of the Masoretic text and bridges a gap in the history of Bible translation that had existed between the Dead Sea Scrolls and medieval copies of the Old Testament. Wow! Just think about this for a moment, let it sink in. If this does not excite you, I don't know what will. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. Many discoveries at the Temple Mount. You probably have never even heard about this. This was between 2015 and 2017. In 2015, they found things like old pottery, arrowheads, boule, and a colonial seal that dates to the time of David's conquest of the city. In 2016, they restored some of the flooring tiles to the Second Temple. This was at the time of Herod's Second Temple. Then in 2017, the TMSP, which stands for the Temple Mount Sifting Project, found Solomon's Colonnade which is a capital from one of the columns from Solomon's porch. This is basically one of the columns that's part of the eastern part of the colonnade of the second temple. And we know that Jesus and some of the disciples were there. For example, John 10 verse 23, and Jesus was walking in the temple, in the colonnade of Solomon. And Acts 5 verse 12 says, now, many signs and wonders were regularly done among the people by the hands of the apostles, and they were all together in Solomon's portico. It's amazing, isn't it? The Bible is alive. When you have some time, read more about this in archaeologyreport.org. And then, I would really recommend you get an archaeology Bible study. Because this is just amazing. It's like the normal Bible. This is the ESV. But in it, you get all these pictures from biblical archaeology. And it's just amazing because it changes the way you read the Bible. Because you see it for yourself. The places that the Bible is talking about. Let's move on to the next one. Jabal's cattle cult. Now this is interesting because, you know, when you go back far into history it's really difficult to find archaeology, proof that people existed, especially when a flood washed it all away. So do we have any evidence of people who lived before the time of the flood? Well, read this with me because this is interesting. Genesis 4 verse 17, Cain knew his wife and she conceived and bore Enoch. When he built a city, he called the name of the city after 
the name of his son, Enoch. So Enoch was born Irad, and Irad fathered Mahuyal, and Mahuyal fathered Methuselah, and Methuselah fathered Lamech. And Lamech took two wives. The name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other Zillah. Ada bore Jabal. He was the father of those who dwell in tents and have livestock. So Jabal is the sixth generation of Cain, right? So Cain is Adam and Eve's firstborn. So his family, I mean, back then, remember, you lived for a very long time and you could have had many children and they had many children. So you kind of start your own tribe. And so this tribe of Jabal, they farmed with livestock. Now listen to this, according to armstronginstitute.org, on April 30, a six-person team of researchers from the University of Western Australia published a research article in the journal Antiquity identifying monumental rectangular stone structures, or mustatils, Arabic for rectangles, scattered throughout Northwest Arabia as part of a prehistoric cattle cult. This found basically confirms the suspicions of many people, including many scientists, that this find is what Genesis 4 is talking about. The stone structures, all of which were dated to the 6th millennium before Christ existed, were characterized as the first large-scale monumental ritual landscape anywhere in the world. And the earliest evidence for cattle cult in the Arabian Peninsula along with cattle-related remains and rock art. Evidence showed that the mustatels were more than merely cattle pens. They were also used in ritualistic activity. Interesting, isn't it? Now, the Institute of Biblical Archaeology says this. This monumental discovery invokes a detail recorded in Genesis 4, verse 19 to 20. In this passage, Jabal, son of Lamech, an individual sometimes associated with this Arabian region, is identified as the father of such as dwell in tents. The Hebrew word can mean ritualistic chambers. And of such as have cattle, King James Version. Pilate's ring. You know, skeptics, they say that someone called Pilate never existed. You know, Pilate, the one who allowed Jesus to be crucified, they said, this governor, there's no evidence of him. But then they found a pilot stone with the inscription Tiberium Pontius Pilate, Prefect of Judea. So this stone proved that Pilate was not just some mystical fantasy character in some book. He was real. He really existed. He was a governor at that time and he allowed Jesus to be crucified. They found this stone in 1961 and now in 2018 they found a copper ring with this inscription. Pilatus, <laughs> short and sweet, Pilatus. They actually found this a while ago, but they only had the opportunity to really clean it now. Let's move on to the next one. The seal impression of King Hezekiah. Some of you might pronounce it Hezekiah. You know, the king who lived righteously before God. They found his seal impression. It's also called a bulla. They found it in 2015 and dated 2,700 years old, with this inscription, Hezekiah, son of Ahaz, king of Judah. It was discovered in Jerusalem with 33 other clay seals, some also with Hebrew names on them. Now this proves that Hezekiah, Hezekiah, however you want to pronounce his name, that he is someone that actually really lived, that existed, and the Bible is true. And there's an interesting story about how God spared his life. 2 Kings 20. In those days, Hezekiah became sick and was at the point of death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Set your house in order, for you shall die. You shall not recover. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, Now, O Lord, please remember how I have walked before you in faithfulness and with a whole heart and have done what is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. And before Isaiah had gone out of the middle court, the word of the Lord came to him, Turn back and say to Hezekiah, the leader of my people, Thus says the Lord, the God of David your father, I have heard your prayer, I have seen your tears. Behold, I will heal you. 
on the third day you shall go up to the house of the Lord, and I will add fifteen years to your life. I will deliver you and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Wow, the Bible is alive. Let's move on to the next one. Gideon's Jug. You know, Gideon, he is one of the judges in the time period before Israel had any kings. The first king was Saul and then David and then so on and so forth. But in the time of the judges, they only had judges to rule them. One of them, Gideon, and they found his mug. But the mug didn't say Gideon, it said Jerubal. Why? Because that was what he was called. Let's read. And they said to one another, Who has done this thing? And after they had searched and inquired, they said, Gideon, the son of Joash, has done this thing. Then the men of the town said to Joash, Bring out your son, that he may die. For he has broken down the altar of Baal, and cut down the Asherah beside it. But Joash said to all who stood against him, Will you contend for Baal, or will you save him? Whoever contends for him shall be put to death by morning. If he is a god, let him contend for himself because his altar has been broken down. Therefore, on that day, Gideon was called Jerubal. That is to say, let Baal contend against him, because he broke down his altar. Archaeology proves that even a small biblical fact like this is true. Christianity Today.com says, Jerubal is the name found written on a pottery jug fragment excavated at Kirbat Er Rai, a site near Tel Lakish, in southern Israel in 2021. The false gods of Canaan. Now, we didn't really have evidence about this until now. According to Christianity Today, Israeli archaeologist Joseph Karfinkel uncovered the ruins of a Canaanite temple from the 12th century before Christ. The excavation site, located in Lachish, one of the most important Old Testament cities in the region has yielded a trove of artifacts used in Canaanite worship, including jewelry, daggers, and two four-inch tall bronze figurines of smiting gods. Not only that, they also found a bronze scepter coated in silver, which they think was probably used to worship Baal, the false Canaanite god. Kirbet al Makater, I think that's how you pronounce it. This is a mouthful, sorry guys if it's wrong. It is an Egyptian scarab, and this is extremely important. Why? Because, okay, let me explain it to you this way. Do you remember when Joshua and the Israelites went to have a big battle at Ai, the city of Ai? Well, they lost the battle, but then God called them to go again, and they were victorious. Joshua 8, verse 1 And the Lord said to Joshua, do not fear and do not be dismayed. Take all the fighting men with you and arise. Go up to Ai. See, I have given into your hand the king of Ai and his people, his city and his land. And you shall do to Ai and its king as you did to Jericho and its king. Only its spoil and its livestock you shall take as plunder for yourself. Lay an ambush against the city behind it. So Joshua and all the fighting men arose to go up to Ai. And Joshua chose 30,000 mighty men of valor and sent them out by night. Verse 28, So Joshua burned Ai and made it forever a heap of ruins, as it is to this day. And he hanged the king of Ai on a tree until evening. And at sunset Joshua commanded, and they took his body down from the tree and threw it at the entrance of the gate of the city, and raised over it a great heap of stones, which stands there to this day." So this rare scarab that they found, this Egyptian scarab, it dates back to this time, to this century, to the 18th dynasty, which is likely in the reign of Amenhotep II, the king who Joshua killed. From 1995 to 2017, they discovered this uh, fortified settlement and they realized it is from the time of Joshua. This settlement has been burned 
was destroyed by fire and it matched all the criteria of the city of Ai in the time of Joshua. BibleArchaeologyReport.com says the Scarab provided a terminal date for the fortress toward the end of the 15th century before Christ, the time the conquest occurred, according to biblical chronology. It, along with a second scarab from the Middle Bronze period, 1650 to 1485 before Christ, helped date the period of the fortress, independent of the pottery that was found. The seal impression of Isaiah. Yes, the prophet Isaiah. This is amazing. They found this back in 2018. Elad Mazar and her team just found it south of the Temple Mount. Enough of it is clear enough to read the name Isaiah in the middle portion and then below it we see the letters NVY, November Victor Yankee, which are the first three letters of the Hebrew word prophet. Now take note, they found this with a batch of other seal impressions. And yes, Hezekiah's impression was also among them. Carvings of the Assyrian king and seven gods were found. It is believed that this king is Sargon II. And we actually read about him in 2 Kings 17 verse 6. In the ninth year of Hosea, king of Assyria captured Samaria. And he carried the Israelites away to Assyria and placed them in Hala, and on the Habor, the river of Gozon, and in the cities of the Medes. Now, listen to what they found. Italian and Kurdish archaeologists uncovered 15-foot rock carvings depicting an Assyrian king and seven Assyrian gods standing on the backs of sacred animals. The artwork was carved in relief in a cliff along a canal in the northern Kurdistan region of Iraq. The king is believed to be Sargon II, who ruled from 722 to 705 BC and conquered the northern kingdom of Israel, 2 Kings 17 verse 6, according to Christianity Today. Now, remember to subscribe if you haven't done so already and watch these videos here and I'll see you there. And always remember, God loves you and I love you too.